This is 7 News at 11. It is an unprecedented moment. Hello again, I'm Craig Stevens. I'm Lynn Martinez. President Biden dropping out of the presidential race in its final stretch. Night team coverage begins live in the Newsplex with Jack Royer. Jack. Lynn, Craig, it is a decision that stunned some Americans and came as no surprise to others. Bowing to calls from fellow Democrats to drop out of the race, Joe Biden now becoming the first sitting president since Lyndon B. Johnson not to seek re-election. Also provided. In a move that sent shockwaves through the political world, President Joe Biden announcing Sunday afternoon that he would drop his bid to win re-election as President of the United States. In a letter posted to X Sunday, the President saying, quote, It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your President, and while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as President for the remainder of my term. For now, let me express my deepest gratitude to all those who have worked so hard to see me reelected. I want to thank Vice President Kamala Harris for being an extraordinary partner in this work and let me express my heartfelt appreciation to the American people for the faith and trust you have placed in me. I believe today what I always have, that there is nothing America can't do. When we do it together, we just have to remember we are the United States of America. Minutes later, Biden endorsed his vice president, Kamala Harris, for the top of the ticket. In a post on X, Harris said, On behalf of the American people, I thank Joe Biden for his extraordinary leadership as president of the United States and for his decades of service to our country. I am honored to have the president's endorsement, and my intention is to earn and win this nomination. Democrats immediately expressing their gratitude to the commander-in-chief. I think today we should focus on Joe Biden's incredible legacy of service to our nation, his selflessness, his accomplishments. The decision coming less than a month after a disastrous debate performance, sending Democrats into disarray with at least 34 Democratic lawmakers eventually calling on Biden to stand down. But the tone and tenor shifted Sunday as Democrats celebrated Biden for his decision. Well, it is a historic day, and President Biden made a courageous decision that uh, Donald Trump could never make, and that is to put country over ego. And as a result of his decision, we have a much better opportunity to prevent Donald Trump and his gang from taking over our government. The Republican nominee Donald Trump saying, quote, Crooked Joe Biden is the worst president by far in the history of our nation, in just one of several lengthy statements he posted to Truth Social Sunday. The 2020 rematch many Americans said they didn't want now won't happen, as Democrats express their gratitude for the man who vowed to be a transition candidate, now passing the torch to the next generation of Democrats, with just over 100 days until voters get the final say. President Biden says he still plans to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu this week at the White House. And tomorrow morning, Vice President Harris plans to speak at an event on the South Lawn at 1130. Live in the Newsplex, Jack Royer, 7 News 19. Jack, thank you. Reaction in coming in from our nation's capital all the way to South Florida as well. The night team's Robin Simmons continues our coverage right now. Robin? The Democrats have praise for President Joe Biden's record and his action today. And the vice president is getting endorsements. A South Florida Republican says President Biden should resign. Nothing but praise from Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell for President Joe Biden. I know that this is a man who made a very, very, very difficult decision for himself. Uh, he's left this country. While the president remains home in Delaware after a positive COVID test last week, a flood of reaction has poured in after he announced he will not seek re-election. From former President Barack Obama, I have extraordinary confidence that the leaders of our party will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges. I believe that Joe Biden's vision of a generous, prosperous, a united America that provides opportunity for everyone will be on full display at the Democratic Convention in August. He stopped short of an endorsement of any Democrat but former President Bill Clinton. Speaking for himself and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton shared this statement. We join millions of Americans in thanking President Biden for all he has accomplished standing up for America time and again with his North Star always being what's best for the country. We are honored to join the president in endorsing Vice President Harris and will do whatever we can to support her. South Florida's congressional delegation also weighing in. Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz addressing voters who may feel the president, who earned 14 million votes in the Democratic primary, was bullied off the ticket by donors and nearly 40 members of his own party. 
at the end of the day, this was also always Joe Biden's decision to make. And he has decided to put country over self and country over party and step aside, concentrate on continuing the legacy of his historic presidency. But Republican Congressman Carlos Jimenez says it's time for the Biden presidency to end. I'm also asking him to consider and really to um, to um, resign, uh, resign the presidency. Uh, it's evident to the American people that the, the president, you know, President Biden doesn't have the, uh, the capability, doesn't have uh, the ability to continue to serve as president. In his letter, President Biden said he will serve out the remainder of his term. Jamie Harrison, chair of the Democratic National Committee, promises that the process to select a new nominee will be transparent and orderly, but says he still supports President Joe Biden. I am uh, emotional. I think about the transformational things we have seen uh, over the course of these past three and a half years from the investment into our climate, uh, fighting against the climate crisis, helping those burdened by student loans, bringing down the cost of prescription drugs. It has been transformational. Small dollar donors to Act Blue have raised $50 million for Vice President Harris in the first hours of her presidential campaign. It is the biggest day for the Democratic fundraising platform since 2020. Live at the Satellite Center, Robin Simmons, 7 News 19. Brian Fonseca is the director of the Jack Gordon Institute for Public Policy at FIU and the 7 News political analyst. All right, Brian, thanks for coming back. What happens now that we're just four weeks away from the Democratic convention? Are they really having to hustle? Yeah, absolutely. So, so right now, I mean, uh, sort of conventional wisdom suggests that VP Kamala Harris is likely uh, to be the nominee for the Democratic Party, but she's still going to have to go through the process of acquiring delegates either before or during the convention. Obviously, if they have, uh, a, if they call a vote before, this would be a mini primary that would take place before the convention. Otherwise, we'll go into an open convention, which is more likely, and delegates will then sort the line up behind either her or other potential candidates that may emerge between now and then. How easy would it be, Brian, for, say, we, we've heard, say, the governor of Michigan, uh, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, or, or others who might want to make a run for it, knowing that Harris theoretically has the president's endorsement and the establishment behind her, how easy a proposition would it be for a governor or some of the others who might think about going for it? I mean, it'd be far more difficult than Harris because Harris already has the infrastructure of a campaign. Uh, she was part of, she's part of the Biden-Harris ticket, so there's already tremendous infrastructure there that's lined up behind her, foreign policy, domestic policy advisory team, surrogates, uh, as well as a, a, a large, you know, pot of donor dollars that have, you know, already been raked in to support that, that particular ticket, she'll be able to pull that you know, infrastructure behind her. These other potential candidates don't have that infrastructure, and they're going to have to ramp up very quickly. And how does Harris poll against Donald Trump? So not incredibly well. I mean, the latest polls I, I've seen have her between five and seven points behind uh, former President Trump. Uh, that could that sort of margin could 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 widen now that she's been you know sort of designated as a likely you know presidential contender, uh, but right now she's still polling between five and seven points behind behind the former president. Much has been made, Brian, about uh, the youth vote, if you will, and a lot of folks who weren't happy with their choices up until now, the president or the former president. But now that you have someone potentially in the vice president who's considerably younger, does that serve, does polling suggest to, that would serve to energize a base that so far seems to have been pretty tuned out to this process? I mean, it could. But if you remember um, when, when sort of Kamala Harris was running for, you know, running to be the presidential candidate in 2020, she sort of fizzed out shortly after the debate. She didn't have an incredible favorability rating. If you look at her favorability ratings right now, she's running at about 37% favorability, 55% unfavorable. Uh, that's what sort of the, you know, what the polling suggests right now in terms of the, the, the appeal or the likability of, of, of Vice President Harris. So, she, you know, while, while she's incredibly well known across the electorate, uh, she's not had great favorability ratings up until this point. I'm not sure if that's going to impede her ability to capture some of those voters that have been apathetic or non-committed up until this point. We'll have to wait to see. Former President Trump does enjoy, we've noticed, of course, over the years, uh, 
name calling his opponents. Do you find it possible maybe somebody who's whispering to him, uh, careful not to alienate those swing voters and, and tread lightly here when it comes to name calling? Or no? Is it going to be the same thing? I think it's going to be the same. I, I think he's got a few things he's already suggested about her, but I think he's going to have to, you know, stay away from maybe gender or ethnicity related, uh, you know, sort of names that she he wants to use as a as a as an attack against her. Uh, but but in Trump fashion, I expect him to come out with something uh, that he's going to refer to her as. Uh, for the remainder of the campaign. Well, it'll be interesting to see because it might require a different approach, as you say, Brian, if it turns out to be the vice president he faces in November, a different approach in terms of how do you attack the opponent it might be a different uh, than he would say with President Biden. Brian Fonseca of the Jack Gordon Institute of Public Policy and our 7 News political analyst, thank you. Well, as the race for the White House changes dramatically, 7's Joe Rhodes is on his way to Washington, D.C. Look for his live reports beginning tomorrow.